her scientific name is Brachiopelma Amelia. See how they fluoresce under the black light? He's our ball python. Eric and I spend a lot of time hiking. When we're hiking, we like to look for bones. Vertebrate animals have bones. Invertebrate animals don't have bones. We've collected some invertebrates for you to see. And hear. Check out this katydid. Katydids are co very colorful. There are some that are all pink. Katydids sing by rubbing wings together. It's called stridulation. Some katydids are herbivores. They only eat plants. But the ones we have here are omnivores. They eat plant matter and meat. Not good news for our walking sticks. We've seen them eating our walking sticks up in the trees. Look closely. Walking sticks are pros at camo. They look exactly like sticks. We're in Texas where the longest insects in the U.S. live. This species grows to be almost seven inches. They can eat a lot of leaves. They love oak trees, pecan, wild cherry, and others. Even though they eat leaves, they don't hurt the trees. They can shed and regenerate their limbs to escape predators. They also play dead. Harvestmen, also known as daddy longlegs, are gregarious in nature. See how they're hanging out together in a clump? Gregarious means they like to be together. Harvestmen don't have venom at all. They don't produce silk either. They are arachnids, but they are not spiders. You don't have to go hiking to find bones and invertebrate critters. You can go to the trading post at the Dallas Zoo. We're going there tomorrow. Let's go pack our bags. Welcome to the Nature Exchange at the Dallas Zoo. There are only eight Nature Exchange posts in the United States, so we're very glad to have one here in Texas. Courtney and I are going to trade our snake skins and tarantula molts for bones. Bones like these skulls are really, really cool and interesting to check out. We have stuff like bones and fossils on our display tables. We have display tables at birthday parties, classroom visits, and festivals like Earth Day. Most of these are from milk snakes. I think this, this one's from gold python. Yeah, that one's from gold python. At least 20 teeth just right here, and then there's bound to be a whole bunch more. And they have the most teeth of any land mammal in the United oh. States. They have up to 50 to 52 teeth. Wow. Wow. So, so that's how I know it's a possum. Or a possum. Right where like, your foot extends out. Oh, but since yeah, a cow sits just like that onto their foot, this would go just like that. Oh, okay. And then their like, hoof would come out like that. So that's where the hoof would actually connect right there. It's always hard choosing what to buy. Check out this fish fossil. We learned a lot at the Nature Exchange today. Now let's go visit our friend Caitlin who fosters rats. This is our friend Caitlin. Caitlin, how many rats are you fostering right now? I'm fostering six females. And what are their names? This is Olive, <laughs> this is Bree, and this is Haley. Now we're studying vertebrate and invertebrate animals today. Are rats vertebrates or invertebrates? They're vertebrates since they have a backbone. Caitlin makes and sells, sells cubes, hammocks, and pouches for lots of small animals. We're going to buy a cube for Gus today. This is where all my rats live. So how long have you been fostering rats? For about eight months. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing your rats with us today. Let's go find some more vertebrate animals. Landa Park in New Braunfels, Texas is a great place to find vertebrate animals. Today we are seeing squirrels, geese, and ducks and nutria. Nutria, also known as river rats, are vertebrate critters from South America. They have three layers of fur and were popular in the fur trade business in the early 1900s. Nutria are semi-aquatic. They can easily move on land, but prefer rivers, streams, swamps, and lakes. Nutria destroy wetlands by eating and damaging aquatic plants. They eat 25% of their body weight every day. 
They also cause bank erosion and force out native wildlife. Nutrient have two to three litters each year, with five to fifteen babies per litter. That's a lot of nutria on the loose. The U.S. and Canada are trapping live nutria and safely removing them. The United Kingdom has been successful in eradicating nutria with this method. For more information, check out our website at www.notsocreepycritters.com.